So Django is one of, if not the most popular Python web framework. And even though there's been a rise in others, for example, FastAPI, Django has been around for a long time and it's definitely the one that's most used in industry. But Django to beginners can be a little bit intimidating. It is a very big framework that offers a lot of utilities. And what I want to do in this series is just present the official Django tutorial. And I want to do that in video format to make it more interactive and approachable. And also add some extra concepts and bring some of these features to light. Now, one thing I've had on this channel is a lot of requests for introductory Django content. And I am preparing something that's larger in scope, but I'm gonna do this introductory series to begin with. Now, before we start, I want to note that the official Django tutorial is excellent, but I have seen on Reddit that some people find it a little bit intimidating. And the idea behind these videos is just to make it a little bit more approachable for people, for example, that might prefer to learn using video format. So we're gonna go through all of these step by step, and at the end of the series, we'll have a working Django application and we're going to deploy that app and we'll have the project in source control in a GitHub repo and that will allow it to be shared with other developers. So let's get started. Before we do, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page and thank you very much to everyone that's contributed to that. It's greatly appreciated and it helps support the channel. And we've also activated channel memberships and don't forget to like and subscribe. And the final thing I want to say before we get started, the playlist for this series is linked below the video if you want to check that out. So here we are on the getting started page in the Django documentation. And this was actually my own starting point with Django. And that was around eight years ago when I started using Django. It's been a long time and it's still my favorite web framework. Now this Django at a glance section is an overview of the framework. And we recently done a video on this, basically following the guide there and showing the high level features of Django. And that video should be appearing on the screen now. I'll leave a link to it below as well. Now what that covered was essentially the core components of Django, for example, URLs, models, views, templates, and also the manage.py CLI tool. Now we're gonna dive into much more detail on those core components in this series as we progress through the tutorial. And what we can start with, of course, is installing Django. So we're gonna to go to this page here, and this is the quick installation guide. Before we can use Django, we need to get it installed. Now, of course, to use Django, you must have Python. At the end of the day, Django is a Python framework, and the source code for Django is written using the Python programming language. So you need to get Python. And if you're following along, I would recommend getting the latest release of Python. At the time of recording, that's version 3.13. So let's open this page here and we're gonna have a look at downloading Python. You can see this button here. So if you're on Windows, for example, you can download just using this button. And there's also gonna be options for other operating systems, as you can see here. So make sure you've got Python installed and then you can verify that. And the way to do that is by opening a shell and just typing Python. So let's see an example of that just now. So I'm gonna bring the shell onto the screen here and let's type in Python. And we can see we're on version 3.13. So we've got Python installed and what we can then do is we can do things like setting up databases. Now that step is only necessary if you want to work with large database engines, for example, Postgres, MariaDB, MySQL or Oracle. We're going to keep it simple in this series and let's now see how we can actually install Django now that we've got Python installed. Now, as it says, the best approach for most users is to install an official release and we can do that using pip and pip is the standard package manager for Python. And you can use that to install and manage third-party dependencies. And Django is an example of that. So we have the Python standard library installed, but if we want to use packages like Django, we need to then download that source code and install it. So pip is the mechanism for that. And if we bring back the terminal onto the screen here, I'm gonna exit out of the Python shell and let's type in pip here. Now, if we type that in, you can see the commands that are available. One of them is the pip install command. We can use that to install Python packages, not just Django, but any third party package that's on the Python package index. And we can also run commands to uninstall packages, as well as list the ones that are installed inside our environment. So to get started with Django, you need to have Python installed. And we're gonna use the pip package manager to actually install Django using this install command. Let's go back to the documentation. Now, before we do that, let's have a look at this section here because this is quite important to understand. We know we've got pip installed from step one here, but what about step two? We need to look at the venv module in Python. Now let me open the Python documentation here. And what this stands for is a virtual environment. So Python applications often use packages and modules that don't come as part of the standard library and Django is an example of that. And applications are sometimes built with a specific version of a library. And you might have other applications on your machine that use another version of the same library. So if we look at this paragraph here, this explains the need for a virtual environment. 
So it may not be possible for one Python installation to meet the requirements of every application on a machine or a server. So if application A needs version 1.0 of a module, but application B needs version 2.0, then those two requirements are in conflict and you either need to install version 1 or version 2, and whatever one is installed, the other one is not going to be able to run. And virtual environments are the solution for this problem. What they are is basically a self-contained directory tree that contains a Python installation for a particular version of Python, plus a number of additional packages. Now an example here would be if you have two Django applications on your server. One might be using the latest version of Django, which could be 5.2, and the other application might be a legacy application that uses Django 1.8. You cannot have a consistent Python environment to support both of these, and chances are if they are different applications like that, they're going to use different versions of other packages as well. So what you do is you create an environment for each application, and you can use the correct version of Python and all the correct versions of the dependencies inside that particular environment, and that's not going to affect the other environments on the machine. Now we can create a virtual environment with this command here. So it's python-m, and then we use the venv module in Python, and we give the virtual environment a name, in this case, tutorial environment. Let's see an example of that on the command line. We're going to clear this out. And let's run a command here, it's going to be python-m and we're going to use the venv module. And let's create an environment called venv tutorial. Now when we run this command, it's going to create that directory structure and we'll have a look at that when the command completes. So that command has now completed, we can run the ls command and you can see here we have a new directory. Now I'm going to open this in VS Code, which is the code editor that I'm going to use in this series. And we can have a look at this virtual environment directory. And notice we have different subdirectories. We also have a git ignore file and we have a pyvenv.config file. Now we don't really need to worry too much about what's in here, but if we go to the scripts directory, and by the way, if you're on a Unix or Mac machine, this is going to look a little bit different. The directories are going to be slightly different. This is the important script that we're going to use. It's called activate. So what you can do on a machine is you can activate and deactivate a virtual environment. So we're going to activate this one just now. Let's go to the terminal on VS Code and we can go into the virtual environment directory and into the scripts subdirectory and we're going to run that activate command. And notice the terminal has changed here and that's telling us that we have this virtual environment activated. Now if you're on a Mac or Unix machine, this is going to be a different command. You're going to use the source command and it's going to be in the venv tutorial directory, in the bin subdirectory and it's going to be the activate script. Now once we've activated this environment, we have a self-contained environment. We can install whatever we want in here and it's not going to affect other environments and it's not going to affect the system Python installation. So let's go back to Django's documentation and we can run the pip install Django command. We can copy that and go back to the terminal and paste that in and that's going to install the Django source code, the Django package into this virtual environment. Now notice here that we're installing some packages and it's not just Django, but Django itself has dependencies to these packages. We don't need to worry about that, but I want to note that this is what's called a dependency relationship. We're installing Django, but the Django package in turn has its own dependencies. And what you can also do inside the environment is you can upgrade pip, as you can see at the bottom. So I'm going to paste that command in there. Let me copy this here. And we're going to paste that in and that will upgrade the pip installation as well, which is a good practice. Now once we've done that, let's clear the terminal. And there's a command I want to run, and that's the pip list command. That's going to list all of the packages that we have installed in the Python environment. And notice we have Django version 5.2.4, as well as the dependencies of Django, such as SQL Parse. So now we have Django installed inside this Python virtual environment. We can now start using Django to create web applications and products. And if we go back to the documentation here, let's just verify that we have Django installed. So there is a section here on verifying. Again, we can just type Python to get into the Python shell, and then we can try importing Django and running this function here. So let's just try that. We're going to clear the terminal and let's run the Python. And if we can import Django here, we know that it is installed. And then we can run the Django get version function here to get the version. And we know that it's installed and we have version 5.2.4. So this is step one of actually getting Django and installing it. What we're going to do in the next video is move on to writing our first Django application. And this is where we're actually going to dive in and learn about the concepts of the framework. So we'll get started with that in the next video. But in this video, we've introduced the concept of virtual environments in Python. And we've created one of those and installed Django into that environment. And we've verified its installation here on the command line. And we're now ready to actually create a Django project and start building the application in the next video. 
So that's all for this one. If it's been useful, check out our coffee page if you want to support the channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And this has just been an intro installation video. We're going to dive further into Django itself in the upcoming videos. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you then.